Right learners, in the previous set of videos we looked at selling on credit and we brought in the debtors journal and the debtors allowances journal for when there were returns. Now just looking back at this chart that I looked at right at the beginning when I said we will have to buy our goods, we sell those goods and we brought in the debtors and some is for cash. Now when we buy our goods it's also possible that we will buy on credit or on account. But when we buy, the people that we owe the money to are our creditors. They're a liability to us. They're people that we owe our money to. And so we're going to have to bring in a creditor's journal to keep record of all the invoices, all the goods we've bought. And again, if there are returns of those goods, because we never paid for the goods before, they're not going to refund me cash we'll bring in a creditor's allowances journal. So just having a look here at the actual, an example of a journal, the creditor's journal looks a lot different from the debtor's journal. And that is because businesses only generally buy and sell actual um, trading stock. But in the case of buying, there's going to be a lot more that they will actually buy on credit. So just gonna say, let me say that again. I don't know why I said it right. When they sell, it's only normally goods they sell. But when they buy, there can be a lot more than just goods that they buy. And so the creditors journal, like we did with the cash payments, will have columns brought in for all the goods that we buy regularly. And if we don't have a column for it, we'll bring in our sundry. So in this particular example, there'll be trading stock, equipment, consumable stores, and the businesses can open any others that they want. Because all of this is bought on credit, we will have a column called creditors control. Now the same as we did with debtors control. This will be a summary of what we owe our creditors in total. So we'll enter the amounts that we bought and we owe our actual creditors. That's why they're in the creditors journal. And the document here is also an invoice. It's exactly the same. The buyer, which in this case will be us, will get the, the top copy and the seller keeps the, the duplicate. Now, if any of these goods that are entered into this creditor's journal get returned, they will go into an accreditor's allowances journal. Same columns as we have with the creditors. But the document this time will be a debit note. Uh, I wonder if you can wonder, work out why there's a debit note. Let's see when we get to the ledger. And then in our cash payments journal, as and when we pay these accounts, we're going to bring in a creditor's control column. So let's start looking at an exercise. All right, so you... We've got an exercise here. We're dealing with a corner store for October. We asked to prepare the creditors journal, the creditors allowances and the cash payments. We then asked to post to the trading stock and the creditors control. So we're only going to do two ledger accounts this time. And then we're going to post to a creditors ledger. Just like we had a debtors ledger, these are the individual creditors. We're going to prepare a creditors list at the end. Now if we look at the balances, we've got a trading stock balance and we've got a creditors control and no balance. Now, think back to when you did the debtors. Where is that balance going to come from? You're given your creditors ledger, five creditors, three of them with opening balances. So I want you now to open up these two general ledger accounts with their balances. Think about what type of account creditors are when you fill in the amount. And then I want you to go to the creditors ledger, drawing on the knowledge you've got from your debtors ledger, and open up their accounts with the respective balances. Right, so your trading stock, which is an asset, old account, you should know that, had a balance of 44,000. Your creditors control, this is a new account, but you know it's a liability. So from that, you know it's gonna have a credit balance. And that balance of 5,700 comes from adding up the individual creditors. And these creditors, Jamison, got a balance of 1,800. So balance brought down and the same in Caxton and the same in OK Grocers. No different. All right, so let's look at the entries now. And again, remember learners, I've said to you that if you don't have the task, just freeze the frame and you can work off this. 
Right, we purchased merchandise costing 840 on account. Again now that's telling you on account and it's giving you an invoice. So both of those telling you now it's got to go to the creditors journal. That's the important thing. You've actually got to know uh, which journal to actually use. So you need to keep yourself alert to the words that are giving it away as to which journal they go into. So we're going to go to our creditors journal and they gave us its invoice number 84. The date is the first. This should be fairly simple to you. Um, from Jamison and Co. Now, we're buying merchandise. Merchandise is another name for trading stock. So you're buying trading stock, and because you're buying it on credit, you owe your creditor 840. Now, at this point, if I was gonna put that into the ledger, remember I explained to you when we did um, the debtor's ledger, that it's customary to post these each, in, each day. You would then go straight into Jamison's account and on the first put your invoice number 84 and it's coming from the CJ. But now remember these are liabilities to you. These are your creditors, the people you owe money to. So a creditor's account increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit. And so that 840 will go in on the credit side. You owe him more money. And your balance, you would add up the two together and you now owe 2640. Now whether you do the ledger at the same time or whether you do it at the end, that makes no difference now, except that you're gonna to have to watch if you've got to work out amounts that are owed. Right, I have, because I've done this one, I'm gonna put in Jamison and I'm going to write here CL1. That's where I put his account in. Right, the second entry now says that we received invoice number 62 from SS Glass for replacing broken window frames. Now here, this is a repair that we actually taking place. We're having repairs done. Now it's repairs on credit, so it's still going to go into our creditors journal. Now, first thing, can you see that the invoices they gave you are not running in order? And that is because you're receiving these invoices from different creditors. Their books will run in order, but you're receiving from various different people. So they're not going to be in order. Now some businesses will renumber them because it makes it easier to find. Others will leave it and just use the invoices as, as they've got them. Right, now SS Glass will be for replacing broken windows. So it's gonna be repair, so we'll have to go to Sunry Accounts and for 213 and it's for repairs same as you did when you did your cash payments and likewise that must go into the creditors control because you owe your creditor right on the six now you paying the march telephone account you paying so you know where that goes again on the six you're paying 900 rand to caxton being the amount owed to them so I want you to do those two entries for me in the cash payments journal, please. And you've done payments before with Telcom and it's a telephone, so obviously you'll have to go to Sundry. And then when you're paying Caxton 900, now your checks will run in order because they're your documents. 900 Rand and that will go into your creditors control column. Right. The seventh, you placed business place advertisements in Caxton newspapers and we received an invoice. So again, you're getting an invoice. So you are having advertisements done on credit, so into your creditors journal. On the 11th, invoice number 220 from OK Grocers showed consumable stores purchased on account. So please there, you must, um, that's gonna be your creditors journal. But on the 12th, you bought and paid for stock, cost 100 from PNP, but you paid for this. So you don't owe anybody money. So it's gonna to go to your cash payments journal. So will you do those entries on your own now, please? Right, so the 7th and the 11th in your creditors journal. That's the important thing. You've gotta watch that you can identify why it's going into which journal. 
and so the Caxton was for advertising so you'll have to use the sundry column and then OK Groceries was for consumable stores and then when you bought the goods for cash remember you're paying cash so it'll be a check and that will go into your cash payments journal right on the 16th after checking the invoice from Caxton newspapers it was discovered that McQuarney's corner store that's us were charged with 10 advertisements instead of 8 they overcharged us Caxton agreed to correct this and they issued debit note now when we had that advertisement done it was put into our creditors journal because we received an invoice it was on account they've now overcharged us and so that's going to go into the creditors allowances journal and into your creditors allowances journal it's going to be debit note number 20 and remember it was originally for advertisements so it must be exactly the same because you need to cancel in your advertisement account the advertisement account must reflect the correct details and it was originally showing 10 adverts that's wrong it's eight so you're going to have to minus out for those two extra so it's advertisement and into the creditors control column so that's where the creditors allowances journal goes in you will notice with the creditors allowances that your documents here will run in order and that's because we send a debit note to our creditor as and when he accepts it he will send back a credit note right I would now like you to go on with the rest of these entries and see if you can work out the rest and total it at the end all right so let's just having a look your creditors journal on the 23rd you bought the two couches which would go under as equipment because I told you that was equipment and into the creditors control your totals here now again you must check yourself very carefully that all the amounts have gone into the creditors control and one of these others so one of these others these four here must add up to your creditors control that's how you check the creditors allowances journal on the 19th um, it told you that we returned some goods to Jamison for 300 it was goods originally so it was going to the trading stock and then on the 24th we returned one of those couches because it went into the equipment before it'll go into the equipment again you minusing out of equipment and again please the creditors control must equal the total of these other amounts your cash payments journal there was um, on the 20th it told you that you paid okay uh, grosses the amount owed at the beginning of the month now if you look back either in the ledger account that you've opened up or if you look amongst your opening balances you owed OK 3000 so you're paying 3000 you're paying off their account so creditors control then there was bank charges of 90 rand and it says to you that the bank statement was received so we got a bank statement over here there was bank charges of 90 and then there was a monthly loan payment of a thousand so that's coming off your loan plus interest on the loan so all of those amounts have, have come on the bank statement so your bank statement has showed a payment of 1290 made up of the three individual in the sundry that said when you get to the ledger you can get these amounts correct I would have accepted it if you'd put the 90 and then the 1200 separate the reason is the loan and the interest would have been paid to the same people but or because these were all paid to BFN Bank the whole amount and then lastly it said we paid Jamison now we don't know what Jamison is so what we can do is remember if we go back to Jamison's account now I already put in the invoice where we added on and then on the 19th we returned 300 rands worth of goods so we had a debit note we're returning so we're debiting and so his balance goes to 2340 and so the amount you paid is 2340 
Now, either you do the ledger accounts as you're doing it, and you can at that stage then get the amount, or you've got to go back through the exercise and look for these amounts, which could take a little bit of time, and time often becomes a problem in these exercises. So try and do it as quickly as you possibly can. And it definitely is an advantage to do the ledger accounts as you're going through it. Again, totaling up, but your bank will equal all of these added together. Right now again, learners, you need to practice drawing up the creditors journal, the creditors allowances journal, and putting it into the cash payments as and when you pay. And there are more activities in all of your textbooks, so please practice that. And then when you're happy with that, then you can go on with the posting to the ledger.